Welcome back. Ordinary Singaporeans with no coding background are seizing the chance to build their own AI bots. Now, these are tools that can remember routines, automate chores and send reports without being asked. Enrollments for some of these courses have soared nearly 400 percent since 2023. And with AI Singapore promising it can be as easy as making it a PowerPoint, schools and training providers are racing to meet the surge. CNA's Noah Kong reports. Like many young parents, Diniti struggled to help her son with Chinese homework until her colleagues suggested a creative fix built him an AI tutor. With just a few English prompts describing her son's age, language level and love of comics, she created her first custom GPT in under two hours. You don't need to have lengthy like coding knowledge or very big understanding of you know how AI works or anything and you don't need any technical knowledge you just need to have decent English and you as long as you can give simple instructions to the GPT it will work for you and you can always keep improving your GPT so it's almost like having a personal tutor at home. By guiding her nine-year-old son to draw his own comics, this custom bot makes learning Chinese a joy. Parents still need to supervise, but the heavy lifting is done by the AI. These AI tools make it seem like anyone can do this. Just type a prompt and you get a story. But is it that simple? Let me show you how it works. The bot breaks it down with pinyin, English translations, and even threw in a quick test. So yes, it's easy enough to use, but here's the catch. How valuable is this kind of tech? Can it spark real creativity and understanding? Or is it just a high-tech shortcut? One researcher says this tech shouldn't just be tools, but used as partners. The most creative way to use it actually start with human input. Either your imagination or something that you drew yourself or a concept that you actually develop yourself based on your experience. And the AI helps you in several ways. One, it helps you to articulate those ideas better because as you debate, discuss it with it like a partner, you can actually make the ideas more robust. Secondly, because of the generative capabilities of AI, you can actually prototype your ideas. At SUTD, nearly 400 leaders have been trained to build custom AI solutions like Denethi's in just minutes. Some institutes that recently introduced custom AI courses have also seen interest soar by up to 200% in the last three months. More advanced tools let anyone build AI agents that reason and act, no coding needed. But experts say some coding skills unlock even more power. One of the hardest part, right, about AI agents is that instructing it precisely on how you want it to, to do what's the outcome and what's the process. Natural language is not very good at this, but if you understand some programming, right, instruction can be a lot better. You have to learn at least some com science, at least some programming knowledge, so you'll be much more effective. Spend 10 days, man, then you'll be like 10x more effective. AI tools still struggle with complex tasks that require coordination across people. That's why Mr. Poon says the most valuable skills in the AI age aren't just technical. By automating routine work, these tools free people up to do what machines can't. Connect, collaborate, and build empathy. For a deeper understanding of customized AI assistance, we now speak to Deepika Giri, Associate Vice President at Technology Consultancy, IDC Research. Ms. Giri, welcome to the program. So in educational settings like the one we just saw, uh, how can custom GPTs be designed to encourage inquiry and foster curiosity and not just provide quick answers? Yeah. So when we talk about uh, using GPTs in education, it's not merely about handing out quick answers, right? It's pretty much like using a calculator. But that's not the point, right? We want something that can spark curiosity, that can spark learning, and uh, make learners more keen to learn even more and dive deeper into the subject. And one effective approach is to design the model to ask guiding questions that encourage critical thinking and deeper exploration. So instead of giving all the answers away at the first prompt, it can probably be tuned to offer some layered responses, 
starting with hints, clues, or suggestions, forcing the uh, user to actually reflect on what they want to do, uh, do some level of self-assessment or even collaboration, right? So it becomes more like a learning buddy or a learning partner uh, rather than a simple search engine. Uh, what potential risks do you see if young users develop habits of deferring to AI without challenging or verifying its output or information? So if young people were to just get used to accepting AI answers, right, and they don't want to question it or verify uh, the validity of those answers, it could really harm the way they think, they learn, they interact with uh, their peers. Uh, uh, I, I think it, it can, you know, play havoc with the way they think, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they may lose the ability to critically analyze um, or even, you know, challenge the information that's presented to them at any given point in time. So um, we don't know because these AI models, we, we just don't know what kind of data is used to train them. And um, uh, end users could end up believing what's not really true, right? So they need to be able to question and validate. And over time, this kind of dependency for even very simple decisions can hurt their problem-solving skills, their creativity, and so on. Um, and again, you know, risks to privacy and ethics. Uh, we, we, we could see a social impact in terms of uh, affecting uh, their social skills, right? Uh, because just interacting with AI could impair the way they interact with real humans. Um, and also, you know, depending always on AI to make decisions or give them directions, um, and I think because of these pitfalls, it's really important for us to tell kids who use AI that it's only a tool, right? Mm -hmm. But then how they use the tool uh, is really important, whether they can benefit from the tool or it could sort of limit them in terms of their own development and understanding of things. Earlier, you were saying about how these uh, AI bots are also impacting uh, social skills. So are, are there specific domains or industries where custom GPTs or AI agents have proven to be, um, have already made a significant impact, either positively or with notable risks? Yes, absolutely. So as per IDC research, we found that in ASEAN, uh, there are about 40% of respondents uh, through our research say that they've already embraced agentic AI, right? And this is across industries and across domains. And we can see multiple industries transforming because automation, uh, productivity, personalizations, driving efficiencies, right? A lot of these things are fairly what we call low-hanging fruits, uh, but real transformation comes from industry-specific use cases. For example, in healthcare, you have AI that can help with uh, diagnostics, personalized treatments, drug discovery in life sciences. That can really help improve patient outcomes. In financial services, you know, the entire B2C, B2B around mortgage approval, credit risk assessment, fraud at analytics, claims processing, all of this can be uh, done. Um, and and we see a lot of this being embraced. But again, there are a lot of risks to it. It's it's not as simple as saying, OK, it can transform healthcare or it can transform manufacturing. You know, uh, we have to ensure there are certain industry uh, related compliances and regulations like for healthcare is HIPAA. Right. You don't want to risk that financial services. Again, when you do credit scoring for a certain customer, you run the risk of explainability. So AI also has to be explainable. So these are things that need to be addressed uh, when we are leveraging AI for these solutions. All right. Appreciate your insights, Ms. Geary. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Uh, Deepika Geary there, Associate Vice President at IDC Research.